Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Today we are talking about how to eat healthy on a budget. People think that eating healthy on a budget is something that is totally impossible to do, but that is just not true. Right, dear? That is right. Um, so we are going to talk about that today. This video is brought to you by our Dining on a Dime cookbooks. Quick and easy recipes to help you save money on your budget. And they are healthy recipes. We have volume one, volume two, and our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook. All are 40% off now. This is the last 48 hours of the sale. So grab it while you can. The last 48 hours of the sale. Livingonadime.com. And... Uh, Oops, wrong thing. <laughs> Love your shirt, Tara. Oh, thank you. I'm feeling Christmassy. Are we <laughs> feeling Christmassy? I was yep. working on the recipe channel's uh, 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 videos this afternoon. I'm up to last Monday is where I've gotten this week's to-do list. <laughs> <laughs> it's where I'm at on that. Uh, for you guys who don't know, we have a recipe channel called Super Easy Recipes, which Michael put the link in there for you also. All right. So we're going to talk about eating healthy on a budget because I get this question all the time that, yes, it's super easy to eat junk food because it's cheap and it's not expensive like healthy food is expensive. And if you want to eat healthy food, then your grocery bill is going to be super expensive and you'll never be able to save on your grocery bill. And as Michael said, he knew he was going to hear this in this show today. That is a lie straight from the pit of hell. I knew she was going to say it. I didn't know she was going to start out the show that way, though. He said, I have a feeling I'm going to hear that phrase in tonight's show. All right, so I have been on a gluten-free diet. I have been on a diabetic diet. I have been even done keto, not <clears throat> as a diet, but as a, well, I mean, as a diet, just for my uh, fibromyalgia and my chronic fatigue syndrome. And for all of those, I have been able to eat healthy, and my grocery bill really didn't go up any. And so how did I do that? Well, I just shopped the sales ads. Okay, the day show done. <laughs> Seriously. So I just rotate through the sales. And I have two here for you. Right here, we've got boneless chuck roast for $4.47 a pound. We've got apples for $1.47 a pound. Pears for $1.47 a pound. We've got ground beef for $2.87. Shrimp for $6.47. We've got bacon for $3.97. Now bacon may not be healthy, but it depends on what your definition of healthy is. Because if you're on a keto diet, then I guess that would be cheap. It also depends on how much bacon you're eating. <sighs> yes. You're eating two or three slices. It's a lot different than it, a pound. Exactly. This week's we had chick boneless, skinless chicken breasts for $1.97. Uh, hamburger was on. These are months are about, these ads are about uh, two months apart. We've got grapes for $1.47, avocados, mangoes for 77 cents. We've got milk for $1.77. And so... But wait, but your prices are a lot lower than other people's prices. Nope. Because I live in Wyoming and we're at the end of the supply chain and my grocery bill has actually gone up. We're totally at the end of the supply chain. So our prices would yeah. probably be... If they were anything, they would be higher than other yeah. places. So when we say that, a lot of times people say my prices aren't as low as yours. And what we've discovered is if we, anytime anyone, for a while, we used to, anytime anyone said that, we'd go online, go Look to stores city. in their area, and we'd find the same prices as here. And so if you're not having that experience, it's probably because you 
probably don't shop at all the stores. You have a certain store to your that you store really snob. Like. And the other thing is like on the healthy thing, some people think you have to go to really expensive stores to be healthy. But if you're eating apples and bananas and <laughs> chicken and rice and normal stuff, then you can be healthy without yep. having to go to the boutique stores. Yeah. Yeah. And our dining, I dine cookbooks, 40% off right now. For those of you just joining us, only 48 hours left on our Black Friday sale are all pretty much healthy recipes. I mean, we have desserts in there, but it's homemade food that takes 15 minutes for most of them or less to cook. I find anybody who says they spend 20 or 30 minute meals, I'm like, why would you spend so long in the kitchen? Seriously, like 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes is what I spend cooking dinner in my prep tank. Now, I may bake it longer, like put it in the oven longer, but I don't count that as my, as my cooking. I don't count my cooking time because I'm not actually physically having to do anything. And so number one tip, if, well, first of all, if you guys have questions, please put them in the comments or if you have comments, put them in the comments and Mike will pull those and read them off to me in just a little bit. First of all, use the ads, stock up this week. It's boneless, skinless chicken breasts. So I stocked up and got the maximum amount I could use part of it for cooking dinner. And then I use the other part and put it in my freezer. I have hamburger right now sitting in my refrigerator, getting ready to be cooked up into small packets. I cook up all my hamburger in the five pound or two pound, however many I get. And then I divide it into little packets of sandwich bags and I put them in the freezer. I've shown that many times. I'll probably show that again, but, um, so then I get all of those and put them in the freezer. And then when the boys want cheeseburger rolls, volume one for that recipe on our website, livingonadime.com, then I can just pull out the already cooked hamburger. And it literally takes me five minutes to make dinner. Literally five minutes. Get some baby carrots out there, slice up some celery sticks, cut up some apples, cut up some oranges, whatever's on sale broccoli. this week. Broccoli, green beans, throw some green beans in the microwave, microwave them up, put a little bit of bacon grease on them with some seasoned salt, and you're good to go for dinner. So first of all, shop the ads. Next, stop being a health snob. <laughs> I know you may want your organic self-sustained, what's the other keywords? Green, free range, cage, free free. range, cage, whatever it is. But look at the facts. So everybody kept saying, I have to have grass fed beef because it has, it's high in omega threes and I need to have my omega threes and you need to have it. And so, uh, I actually went and looked it up and the amount of omega-3 in grass-fed beef versus traditional corn-fed beef is literally minuscule. It is minuscule. It is, it doesn't even come close to being worth paying the extra price for that. The same with eggs. When I looked up the actual numbers for how much is in grass-fed or range cage-free, range-free, whatever your terminology is and where you are, it is minuscule. And for the price, if you're that deficient in omega-3s, then just get some pills and take the pills. I mean, I'm on them every day for my fibromyalgia and they help great, but I would never get enough in my diet to even come close to what comes into the pills. Okay, so start um, start just eating regular foods. And if you actually need a supplement, just take the supplement instead. You're not going to get everything you need out of foods. And um, you're spending a whole lot more on food than you actually need to. Okay, next thing is 
Would you like to say mom's tip that you know she ever, she's going to say? Go ahead. She would say, it's all about, remember, it's all about portion control. <laughs> but it is. Stop eating so much darn tootin food. Well, a lot of those things like when Tara was talking about the omega-3s and all that, if you eat a healthy amount of food and you eat a nice variety of normal food, then you don't have to eat fancy boutique kind of food. Now, some of that stuff, if you like the boutique food and you want to pay more for it, go for it. Yep. And even, you know, it, it just flat out boils down to stop eating so much food. You don't need to be on a diabetic diet. You don't need to be on a keto diet. You don't need to be on vegan, vegetarian. You don't need to be on, oh, paleo, Mediterranean, any of those things at the moment. Or whatever's the keyword diet of the year. You don't need to do any of those. You need to just stop eating so much food. Use smaller plates. Don't go and get seconds. Um, stop snacking all the time. This is my big one that I have an issue with. I just snack all day long. Instead of just sitting down and eating three meals, I snack all day long. It's just eating too much food. My grandmother, my mother... My grandmother is 94. My mom is 70, 29 years old. And <laughs> uh, they both have been, I mean, I know mom has chronic fatigue syndrome, but other than that, they both have had fairly good health their entire lives. They've always been a decent weight. Why? Because when mom sits down and eats her chocolate, she doesn't sit down and eat the whole bag of chocolate. She eats one candy bar or a half a candy bar. She eats one bowl of ice cream. Grandma will sit down and eat one donut. And so you've got to get your portion sizes out under control. We've had viewer after viewer say, I took your advice. I lost X amount of pounds. Thank you so much. One lady just wrote and said she lost 40 pounds. Just by stopping eating so much food. That's going to help you cut your grocery bill down and you will be healthier for it both. Next, start cooking at home. Another big problem is people just eat out way too much. Most of my dinners are $5 or less to feed a family of four. What will I have? I'll cook a roast. And I'll add a potato in there. And then I'll add some carrots. And we'll have just a roast potato and carrots with a salad. Or coleslaw. I'll do green chili. And just have green chili with some lettuce on the side. And then salsa. And then if I want, I'll do a side of vegetables. Of whatever vegetables. Like we'll just have some baby carrots or chop or cut up celery or something like that. Um. I don't make elaborate vegetable dishes. It's sliced baby, it's baby carrots. It's sliced carrots. It's cut uh, celery sticks. It's broccoli cut up. It's cauliflower cut up or cooked broccoli or cooked cauliflower. Just steam it and then put a little bit of butter and some seasoned salt on it a little bit of gr your green beans with a little bit of bacon grease. We're our, my green beans aren't swimming in bacon grease. They're swimming in one or two teaspoons of bacon grease, just to give it some flavor. Bacon grease is not unhealthy for you. Having bacon grease every single day in massive quantities is not healthy for you. But when you take one or two teaspoons and you divide it by four people for green beans, you end up getting like, oh, what would that be? Like a third, like a, well, not quite a half. Yeah, well, I guess for four people, a half, if you do two teaspoons, it would be a half a teaspoon of bacon grease. Well, a tablespoon of any fat, pretty much any fat, a tablespoon is 100 calories. A tablespoon is three teaspoons. So we're talking maybe 10 calories worth of bacon grease. Stop blowing things completely out of proportion, which is what people are doing. 
they'll say, oh, I can't have bacon grease, can't have bacon grease. And we were talking, tell them what your grandma's cookbook said. So my grandmother was a nurse in the 1940s. And, they, and she was a, a home ec teacher. She was a home ec teacher nutrition. and she had all yeah. kinds of books that were about the, the healthiest things that science understood. And one of the books was Eating Healthy with Lard. And I just laughed because at the time I saw that book, and it was, all the fat-free so diets fat. were popular. Yeah. Everything low-fat and fat-free was popular. And I was like, here's eating healthy with lard. Yeah. And the reality is lard isn't unhealthy in a normal amount. The main issue is people just eat way too much of it. And so yeah. it's just funny because I said to Tara, all those things that the news, news and magazines and things like that, they make comments about things mostly because if you feel like you should listen or watch them, they get paid. And so I was thinking, how many of those things that right now everybody says, oh, you have to have this. How many of those things in the future is somebody going to look and say, eating healthy with lard? <laughs> so. Yeah. And so really, go ahead and send me the first uh, first load. So really, it's actually quite simple. It's just re really, if you want to decide to eat healthy or not. I mean, that's what it boils down to. And, um, you know, we've had person after person say, well, what do you have on a diabetic diet? What do you do for your diabetic diet? I still eat all the carbohydrates I want. I just don't eat so many. I just totally cut back on what I'm eating. I don't eat two pieces of toast for breakfast. I eat one piece of toast and two eggs. I eat one piece of bread or toast with lettuce and chicken salad or egg salad or tuna salad for lunch. And um, I don't make it complicated. Everybody wants me to write a diabetic cookbook, but guys, I mean, I guess I should because I didn't think anybody would buy my gluten-free cookbook, but, <laughs> but I've been gluten-free and dairy-free for 10 years now, and our grocery bill did not go up at all when I became gluten-free and dairy-free, like zero. It didn't go up at all because I choose things like rice, potatoes, and... um Sorry, I have to keep the phone next to me because Jack's got a thing going on. Um, rice and potatoes. But I don't go and eat two potatoes at a setting. If it's a big potato, I'll eat a half of one. If Or a little potato. I will eat a half a cup of rice, not three cups of rice. And I'll have, you know, this much rice and slightly more, maybe this much, slightly more meat. And then a lot more vegetables. And so I think you need to just stop making it so complicated because you're overwhelming yourself when you don't need to. And if you would start just simplifying your healthy eating, I think you would really find it much easier, much more doable, much more encouraging then listening to all these gurus who are telling you to do all this crazy stuff, like what's the crazy right now? I don't know. Keto is the crazy right now, I guess. And fasting is the crazy, which is fine. But okay. basically it just boils down to stop eating so much food. Well, a lot of times they, they bring up food items like, I don't know, was it healthy or what was the reason that they were using quinoa? It was healthier was it because they said yeah. it was healthier and it's high in protein. The thing is, is that some things like that, you know, they're probably healthy, but you don't really necessarily need those. And they're more expensive and they they're not the thing from where you are. So it's OK to eat that. It's just that just because people on TV say you should eat it doesn't mean you have to really fit that mm -hmm. into your diet. Yep. Barbara says three weeks and two days till Christmas Eve. Time is flying. What? No way. <laughs> Seriously. I'm like, oh, I just want to get all my decorations done, but I got to shoot some videos for them. And so I'm trying to get them done. Um, hold the four winds of the earth. Says, I can't wait for you guys to light up the Christmas trees. Ah, oh, no pressure now. <laughs> <laughs> so it was very interesting. So last night we hauled two of the Christmas trees back into the house. 
So now we have four Christmas trees in our living room. <laughs> <clears throat> well, Jack discovered that there's a technical thing on one of them that said not to use it outside. <laughs> Yeah. Well, he actually wanted to keep it. I didn't think he really liked it that much. So I was like, okay, you know, I'll just do it. So Barbara says, had breakfast for dinner tonight, made our pancakes. Ooh, dining on a dining cookbook, sifted dry ingredients, and they were one inch high. So fluffy. Yes, Barbara, they would be. The pancakes are the best in here. I tested like five different pancake recipes and I finally found one that I really love. By the way, if you guys want our planner, our yearly undated planner is at the printer right now. So for those of you asking for our planner, I'm hoping tomorrow I can get that filmed. I don't know the way things are going. I just don't know if it's going to work, but our yearly planner and our cookbooks are 40% off. Our planners are not on sale because they're printed here in the United States. So just for a second, Kenneth says, well, I still want three servings of your recipes at a time. Uh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Kenneth. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's the hard part when it's good food, but you know, people think that, that it has to be expensive and shiitake mushrooms and quinoa and all the stuff you got to chop at Trader Joe's and, Whole Foods and all this other stuff, and you don't have to do that. Um, so yeah, Karen, you're all killing me with the video. So encouraging. We are paying extra on our house payments. Shocking how it's making such a difference. Woohoo! You yeah. go, girl. We did too. We made a huge chunk yesterday. A very large chunk. We made a 10% chunk yesterday, didn't we? Of what? A house payment. Uh yeah. We paid 10% on our house payment yesterday. So I wanted to have it all paid off by December. It's looking like April or May now, but maybe January. If you buy our dining on the dining cookbooks for 40%. Sorry, I couldn't resist that one. I, for those of you okay. who know, in the past, when we were paying off credit cards, I made a little uh, visual yeah. representation and I... I kind of predicted the graph. And then when I, when we were ahead of the graph, I was, we were kind of super excited and it, it compelled us to really want to pay it off more because I would see the graph and think, surely we can do better than that. So for this, I made a, a couple of, I made the, a conservative scenario and a doable, but not quite sure if we'll get there scenario. <laughs> and it's, making it easier to intensely try to pay off that stuff yep. faster. Yeah. Debbie says, hello, Tara and Mike. Been watching your older videos on the candy recipes, loving them and making out my list for things I will need to make for candy. I thank you. Loved all the hats you guys wore in them. Yes. We're actually, I just got the hats out. So we're going to probably start those next week. <laughs> uh, Christy wants to know how long past the best sale date is the pre-made cheese ball sold from the grocery store. Thank you. I would say probably a week to 10 days. I probably wouldn't go further, maybe two weeks. It just, it really depends on the cheese ball and what's in it. If there's meat in it, I wouldn't go past a couple of days like bacon. Sometimes they use real bacon bits or something like that. But uh, most cheese can go a week to 10 days if it's a soft type. I mean, you're saying a cheese ball, not hard cheese. So a cheese ball would go um, bad quicker. So I wouldn't say too long. Um, Amanda wants to know how much are hams in our area right now? I have no idea. Um, I, let me just look right now and just see what we have here. Ham at Walmart for me is right now they are $2.28 a pound, $5 a pound, $4.48 a pound, $4.48. Uh, $1.98 a pound. So it looks like the cheapest one is $1.98 a pound. So I might be running over and get one of those since I missed out last week. I'm trying to decide if I want to wait for Christmas. See, that's another tip, guys. Ham, turkeys, those go and butter go, and baked goods. Those go on sale around the holidays. So I'll probably wait until Christmas to, to get my ham because really why pay double when I don't need to. But I just, that ham was so good and we ate it all when the kids were here for Thanksgiving. I was a little disappointed, but just be watching your sales because ham will probably, will probably not guarantee it, but probably go on sale again, um, coming up here in the next week or two for Christmas. Um, Faye D, every time I stick meat in the freezer, it gets freezer burn. burn. 
Um, I don't know why it gets freezer burn. I put my meat in and it takes six months to a year to, before it gets freezer burned. So how long are you keeping it in there? If you're keeping it over a year, then yes, it'll have freezer burn. If it's under a year, you shouldn't be getting freezer burn. That may mean that your freezer is broken and it's turning off and defrosting partially and then turning back on again. So how old is your freezer? You might check that to make sure the thermostat is okay with that. Um, what you can do with that is you could get a, a, I don't know if this would work or not, but you could get a thermometer with a sensor that you put in there and you put the, the thermometer part, you put the reader part on the outside and the sensor on the inside, and then you set it at a certain temperature. And if it goes below that temperature, then it'll go off and beep. But I don't know if they have the, I know they have those commercially. I don't know if they have them for, uh, just regular people, but you might need to check your thermostat and see. Um, Ruddy Dog says, I, I wanted to learn to cook. Now, I'm sorry, I didn't pay attention. My parents were both amazing cooks and I tried to teach me. I'm trying to learn out of necessity. Now I miss home cooking. Yes, that's exactly what I did. My poor mother, she tried and tried and tried to teach me how to cook. I realized when we got married, we can't be eating out all the time. So I had to learn how to cook and I did. And I realized it's a whole lot easier than people make it out to be. So Dining on a Dime Cookbook, 40% off right now, guys. It's our Christmas sale. Only twice a year do we go 40% off Mother's Day and Christmas. Grab it now. We only have 48 hours left on our sale. That's volume one. Volume two, they are totally different recipes. And then volume uh, green <laughs> is called is our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> what? Well, there's actually, did you get the question? There was a question in there about gluten-free. I haven't got that far yet. Gotcha. I will okay. get there. Okay. Uh, Beverly says the cheapest meat in our area is chicken leg quarter, 79 cents a pound and chuck roast is $4.99. Oh yeah. Chicken leg quarters are great. And our maple glazed chicken, honey glazed chicken, chicken soup, green chili, chicken and noodles. We have a ton of recipes that you can use with those chicken leg quarters in our dining on a dime cookbook. Just because it's cheap doesn't mean that it's not good meat to eat. Just slow roast it in the oven is the best. That makes the best chicken. Is That makes the best food just using your oven. And no, it doesn't cost a lot. It costs about 25 cents to run your oven for eight hours, even with the prices now. So use your oven to help with um, prices. Word healthy. All right, Tracy, we just had Swish Steak from our Dining and Dining Cookbook, Volume 1, delicious. We got two meals out of it, mashed potatoes, green beans, and a side of fruit cocktail. Yum, that sounds really good. Life with Linda says, eat Tars Brownies from Volume 1. Thank you guys for all these testimonials. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes, my brownies recipe is from my home ec teacher who also tried to teach me to cook, and I didn't learn how to make brownies. I did learn that, and they are very delicious. Thank you for our ordering our volume one and two rowdy dogs or rotty dogs, I guess. <laughs> uh, Meg is looking up. I just ordered the cookbook last night. It will give me more meal ideas for when I don't know and don't care when I ask my family what to eat for dinner. Yes. And if you need meal ideas right in here, we have a whole list of menu ideas. We have like six pages, I think, on page 11 to page, yeah, page 11 to 15 is four pages, menu ideas on what to cook using the recipes in our cookbooks. And here's a tip. Just take your 10 favorite meals, write them down on an index card. And then when you're not feeling good, just keep all of those things in your pantry and just rotate through those meals. Most people eat the same 10 meals anyway. So that way you're not having to think, you're not having to worry about food. Just make the same thing and keep those items always on hand in your pantry and it helps you save money also. Uh, Ms. Cheryl says, what if you have a kid who can't eat gluten? 
get our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook right here, 40% off right now. But I'm gluten-free, dairy-free. And let me tell you, our grocery bill has not gone up. It's not. Mm -hmm. So the main thing about gluten-free, and this is why Tara wrote the cookbook, is it's really not that, it's really not more expensive than other eating unless you buy all the pre-made gluten-free stuff at the store. Like they make that stuff and people feel like they have to buy it because there's some secret to making gluten-free. Wow. And there's not really a secret to it. So Tara mm -hmm. came up with all these recipes that she liked herself and people kept asking. So she ended up making <laughs> gluten-free. And originally as someone else had asked if it's the same as volume one. So gluten-free is adapted from volume one. So I was just using volume one and I said, just use the recipes in Diana. Well, I don't know. So finally, I just wrote gluten-free, dairy-free, and it's adapted from here, but everything is gluten-free, dairy-free in the green one, okay? So some of the recipes in here would be the same. Yeah. But then other rest, a lot of the recipes that are like the, the gluten-free, the baked yeah. goods, those are, it's the same um, style, but different. Yeah. So like it might still be brownies, but the recipe would be a completely different yeah. recipe. Yeah. So some are the same and some are radically different. And by the way, is it the brownies? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love the brownies in the gluten-free book more than the brownies in the regular book. And the boys love the bread more yeah. in the gluten-free book than in the regular They'll book. eat the sandwich bread in here just like that. I have to literally hide it. I have to make it when they're ex in school and hide it. Because they will eat that if I don't hide it from them. And then I don't have anything left. So, yeah. And I didn't get mine made this week. And now I'm going to have to make it tomorrow. And I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to hide them. <laughs> hide it from them. Uh, Lisa, since my husband went to heaven, I watch your live videos all night. Tara brings me cover. Oh, Lisa, I'm so sorry. But thank you. I'm glad we can be there for you. Yes. I. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um. I didn't know people just watched us over and over and over. I guess they do. But well, do it's you... kind of nice to have a little community here, you know. How does it feel? You just get to have me all the time. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, I love you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I sensed hesitation there. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. 18 hour a day live stream. <laughs> it's definitely a stream. <laughs> I am not the vocal one in our family. We'll just say No, that. I wasn't meaning that. <laughs> All right. Uh, holds the four wins. How much is the half and half over there? I tried to substitute evaporated milk with carrageenan and it made me sick. I think it's how it's spelled. Uh, I don't know how much the half and half is here. I bought some whipping cream and I about had a heart attack. It was like $4 for two cups. So I ain't buying that anymore. And um, carrageenan makes me sick also. It's just one of the things on my list of 46 things that makes me sick, which is absolutely ridiculous. But um, e you can't always substitute, though, evaporated milk for half and half. For things like in your coffee, you can. But not all evaporated milk has carrageenan in it. So just look at the bottle and see, or I mean the can, and see what it says. Uh, Diana, I just told my hubby he has only 48 hours to get the gluten-free cookbook for me for Christmas. I have volume two, one and two, and I need it. <laughs> Yay! Actually, we, we really need to check the inventory on this. We're selling a lot of these. Yeah, actually, I was going to check I'm that selling shortly. a lot. <laughs> um, we, I don't know, I don't know how many pallets we have left or if we have any pallets left, but we're, we're selling <laughs> them pretty quick. Uh, let's see. Beverly, I stopped asking. I cook. That's it. Eat. Eat it or fix your own. I don't worry about organic or not. Yes, I must control carbs. And no, I can't eat much fruit. Half an apple is pushing it for me. And that's fine. You know that, but you're still eating a half an apple. So you know what works for you and you just make your portion size to what works for you. So that's great. Um, let's see, Denise, does anyone know what causes fibromyalgia? Uh, no, although a study just came out from Israel just a few months ago saying that they noticed that that bacteria in 
the gut of people with fibromyalgia is a bacteria that's not in the gut of people who don't have fibromyalgia. So they found that very interesting. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it causes it, but you know, it's just one of those things that I guess they're working on. Um, Chitterbug, do you have a video on fibromyalgia, what you take to treat for it? Please. I'm in dire night if need of help. Yes. Actually, if you go to the videos at living on a dime on YouTube, if you go to the videos and type in fibromyalgia, I have like, I don't know, six or seven different videos on there. And I just did one recently, like six or eight weeks ago of everything I take also. Mommy of six, I cannot get rose for $5. I don't think anywhere. Well, just keep looking. I It's probably there. You may, you may not be looking unless you're in Alaska or Hawaii, but I've seen it all over the country recently um, in ads. I've seen it all over the country in ads. So just keep well, watching. And I haven't heard if you said this already, but um, a lot of times something, it won't be on sale anywhere for a week or two, and then it will be. Yeah. So you have to kind of keep looking out too, because mm -hmm. that's one reason why we have the freezers because Tara will get a whole bunch of stuff when it's on sale. Mm -hmm. And then when it's not on sale, we'll only eat what we got on sale before. So we never have to pay the full price. For yep. It. Yep. And I didn't realize we were off center there. Sorry guys. Uh, right. Dog suggests that's my problem. Picking up the takeout for dinner. Yes. So here's how you solve that problem. You cook dinner before you leave home. And what you do is you put a roast in the oven, slow cook it, use our slow cooked roast, dining on a dime cookbook, volume one, 40% off for a Black Friday sale, guys, only 48 hours left. I'm announcing it a lot because every sale we get somebody that says, I missed out on your sale. I'm announcing it a lot for that very reason. Use the slow cook roast recipe, put it in your oven before you go to work, 200 degrees, follow the directions, your roast, a little bit of seasoned salt, cover it in foil, put it in your oven on low for 200. And when you come home and with your potatoes and carrots, if you want, just throw those in there. And then when you come home from work, your house is going to smell so good and you're going to have your dinner all totally made. Now, that's not just one dinner though. Then you take that roast and the next night, you have the pot of boil, you have the pot of water sitting on the stove waiting for you to come home, or you can go ahead and do it that night if you want and pre-boil your noodles, but have the pot of water sitting on the stove. So all you have to do is turn on the water to get it boiling while you're changing your clothes from work, throw in your noodles, cut up some leftover roast beef, put it in with some of the leftover gravy or leftover juice from the roast beef into your noodles, heat it all in the pan, and you've got beef and noodles. The next night, what you're gonna do, you're going to come home, you're gonna take the same roast beef, you're going to put it, or the next morning, I mean, sorry, the next morning, what are you gonna do? You're gonna put that same roast beef in your crock pot, or you can do it in the oven if you want, but put it in your crock pot with the leftover beef juices. Let it simmer on low all day long with your carrots and your potatoes cut up if you want. And put your seasonings in. Mom's beef stew is the best beef stew. I'm telling you, it is so good. Then when you come home, your stew is all done. You just dip it out and you eat it. That's how you stop from eating out is think ahead, and it's not that you have to put everything in the crock pot, and it's not that you have to have everything pre-cooked or have to have freezer meals or anything. Most of these things can be done in 10 or 15 minutes after you get home. But you just turn the boiling water on while you're changing your clothes, and then you go put the noodles in while you're getting out your baby carrots or slicing up your celery or cooking your broccoli or whatever, and then it literally takes you 10 to 15 minutes to cook dinner. You can't even get through the takeout that fast at rush hour. Seriously, it takes like a half an hour to 45 minutes to get through the takeout here. It's crazy. So send me the next one. Um, mm -hmm. So don't make it super complicated. Just start cooking ahead and use your leftovers for the next night meal. It's not leftovers. You're pre-cooking for the next meal. 
D. Kasit says, I no longer hate going grocery shopping. Your tips have turned it into a most challenging, fun experience. It's empowering, and we have been following them for so long now that we have variety. That is great. Yes. People ask on the ad, do you only eat what's on sale in the ads? And these ads right here. Pretty much, yes. Why? Because if boneless ch skinless chicken is on sale, I'll buy more than I need, use part of it now, throw the rest in the freezer. Next week when roasts are on sale, I'll use a roast for those few dinners and throw a couple in the freezer. Then when pork chops are on sale or pork loins are on sale, I'll buy, use one for dinner. And then within three to four weeks, I have enough different meats in my freezer that all I have to do is rotate. Yep. So, I mean, yeah, you just, you do use what's on sale. Now for me, Walmart here is the cheapest on <clears throat> regular groceries. And the other two grocery stores do like meat and vegetables is where their good deals are. But, you know, if you have an Aldi or save a lot, those saved us a lot of money. Winco is a great place. I hear Win dixies good. Uh, so just use the stores that you have. I haven't seen Win dixie in a long time. Yep. That was back in the Piggly Wiggly days. Yep, it <laughs> is. Carol Ann says you need fats for your brain and muscles to function properly. Yes, that's why it's not really good to go on a low-fat diet. It's okay to eat the butter. It's okay to eat the bacon grease. And I'm not saying you're going to be eating tablespoons and tablespoons a day. People have a cow because we use shortening in our recipes. Okay, a half a cup of shortening in a cake divided by 20 pieces is like a teaspoon or two teaspoons, you know, we're talking that much in a serving. It's not the shortening that's the problem. It's eating the four pieces of cake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Debbie says, I am an RN who also has diabetes and I am, ex and I am exactly correct. Thank you. I am. But I will tell you every time I say that about a diabetic diet is just stop eating so much food. You will not believe the backlash I get <clears throat> every single time, mm -hmm. every single time I get all kinds, all kinds of backlash, but I have been to nutritionists and nutritionists. I've had to be on a diabetic diet. I got gestational diabetes with my last pregnancy. Believe me, I know a diabetic diet and it just boils down to stop eating so much food. What was the question? I just wasn't sure. Oh, yeah, okay, because somebody else had a different diabetic thing later. Um, you pretty much answered theirs, too. Mommy of six, I've been wanting, waiting to catch you guys on live stream to tell you about my Thanksgiving turkey. Made it upside down. Husband would not stop raving about it. Yay! Dining and Dine Volume 1. There is a typo in the index. It's on page 240, not 250. Um. We are correcting that for the next printing. Uh, Miss Cheryl, in your cookbook, does it tell how to make gluten-free bread? Yes. In our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook, it ha we have the best sandwich bread you will ever eat that's gluten-free. You must follow the directions exactly. I cannot stress this enough. People are always emailing me. I don't know. Your recipe doesn't work. My recipe works. Believe me, I tested more than 40 gluten-free sandwich bread. But you cannot deviate from the recipe. If you're high altitude, follow the high altitude directions. If you're like we are right on the line of high altitude, if it fails, then use the opposite. So like I make the low altitude bread now, but if it failed, I would make the high altitude and see if it would work. It is very sensitive to altitude and it is very sensitive to changes. Follow the directions exactly. Exactly. Okay. Actually, I, in the regular book, the, at least the first few times you should probably do that too. Right? Yes. Like in the gluten-free book, it's really, really critically important. But in the regular book, sometimes we have people that say, I made this recipe, but I substituted this and I substituted that and I substituted that. 
and they substituted four or five things and then they say it didn't work. I'm thinking, They're like, well, this is gross. But if you use, if you substitute four different things, it's not really the same recipe. <laughs> so no. even in the regular book, you should make it at least once or twice the way the book calls for it. And that way, you know, for sure, you can make, you can make the recipe yep. work before you start modifying it. Yeah. Yep. Rita, how is Dave doing? Praying he's doing better. He actually was able to make it to work after having to take off this. He's been sick for two weeks now, full two weeks now. And even then he went to work and, and when one of the guys that works there, he was like, man, dude, that's a bad cough. And Dave said, well, actually, this is a whole lot better than it has been. And he's like, well, what are you doing at work? He said, well, I've got pneumonia, but I'm on antibiotics now. And so I'm doing better and I got to get out of the house. <laughs> He's like, I'm tired of laying around. <laughs> Poor Dave. So yes, he today he got up and was a little bit perkier. And Mike got to use Big Bertha today. <laughs> You'll see that on Tuesdays, Tightwad Tuesday. But he got to use Big Bertha. Yep. Green Mama 93. Hey from Billings. I appreciate your heart for helping people and all your practical advice. Thank you. We appreciate you letting us know that. And you know, guys, if you have YouTubers that you like and you appreciate them, let them know. You would not believe, even Amir Safante, one of the Bible teachers that we really like, even today he was posting how he, you know, he used to answer every question and everything. And, and his friends used to tell him, don't, don't read the social media comments. It's just not worth it. And he was like, oh, you know, I'll, I want to be, see what people are saying. He said, now he said, it's getting to the point where it's so discouraging because people are just so mean and hateful and trying to educate you. Had one trying to educate me again today. I'm like, honey, I, you believe whatever you want, but I'm speaking the facts. And if you don't want to believe it, that's fine. But let the other YouTubers know if you appreciate them, they appreciate you letting them know that you appreciate them <laughs> because there really is a lot of people have no idea on the back end of YouTube and Facebook, how bad it is. And it, I mean, it's really bad. Even Mike that has had no clue how bad it is. And we have someone I'm protected. I'm sheltered. <laughs> yeah. And we have someone who who checks out my email first and we have someone who checks the comments first because it's so bad. I'm like, I can't keep doing this with people just railing on me and they just delete most of, most of those things. So, okay. So this is a little bit off the track of the food thing, but I think since the internet became a thing and especially social media, everyone feels like they have to correct and criticize everyone else. Yeah. It's just, it's kind of shocking to see, Yeah, especially when, if people, some people really just don't like us at all and they'll stick around and keep watching and telling us that rather than just finding somebody they like better. <laughs> so yeah. it's just kind of weird psychological place that people have gotten into since the internet has been, has allowed people to feel like they know more yeah. than they know. <laughs> Well, and it's funny because even this week, there was this huge fight that broke out between some YouTubers and they were both at fault. I followed the whole thing just out of curiosity and they were both at fault. And I'm like, if both of them would have just shut their mouths, it, neither one of them would have looked like they were 12 year olds, but they kept going on and they kept going on. And both of them looked like they were petty middle schoolers. And I was just like, seriously, and both these people complain or claim to be Christians. And it's like, you know, the internet has really ruined society. It really has. And so that's why I'm like, you know, if you guys have YouTubers that you really like and you appreciate, let them know, because especially the smaller ones, I mean, well, and the bigger ones too, but especially the smaller ones, because they get so discouraged having all these people just railing on them all the time. Actually, there are a lot of people letting you know that they appreciate you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I, this was not, this was not a, a ploy for getting kudos for us. I was just letting you guys know because- well, we know some smaller YouTubers that are like horribly discouraged or some that are bigger, but they just, they're having trouble with the onslaught of stuff. Camille says, that's why I couldn't start a channel. I'm too sensitive. Yeah. If you're sensitive, you can't. You, really, yeah. you wouldn't 
you would want to let that go. Yeah. And if you are doing something and you're sensitive, you have to realize most of the negative people are just trolls. They don't really. Now, I use it to my advantage. As a matter of fact, some of the videos coming up that we shot a couple of weeks ago. So we use it to our advantage. And I'm like, hey, Mr. Troll, go ahead and say what you're going to say. I'm going to make $500, $1,000 off of this. <laughs> I'm at the point now where I'm like, okay, if you're going to be bringing it on, I'm going to get paid for it. And, and frankly, we get paid quite well for having to deal with these people. So, but you know, I, I understand how other people get really, you know, discouraged by it. A lot of people said that they saw the same fight that you were describing. <laughs> I'm like, are yeah, we 12 it, years old? It sounds old? like a lot of people were baffled about that too. Even Mike was like, I cannot believe this is actually going on. But anyway. Well, the funny thing is that there are times where some other YouTuber says something that maybe we don't agree with it or maybe we even think it's silly. We never get into a fight with people over that. It's like they can say what they want on their channel. <laughs> I don't care. But I will say that if any of you guys know what we're talking about, they've been both have been blocked from our channel for years. So <laughs> they tried to pull that baloney with us. I don't put up with it. I blocked them. I'm done. And I moved on. So you don't need to educate everyone if you don't agree with their stance. And for me, it was the whole canning debacle. But so it's been years. But anyway, um, uh, D case that says I've made the bread and it came out great. I've divided it up into sections and pulled out of the freezer when I need it because I don't eat bread every day. That's exactly what I do. I'm telling you, if you follow the recipe exactly and are dining on a dime, gluten-free, dairy-free, 40% off right now, guys. All of our print books, only 48 hours left, 50% off all of our eBooks, including our digital download is 50%. But we have our planners are not, they're not on sale. These are printed in the United States. I'm super sorry, but we can't put these on sale because they're printed here in the United States. But this thing is huge. 400 page daily planner. If you guys are looking for our planners, mom and I hope to go down next week. I hope we'll see. I need to check on Monday and see, excuse me, where they're at. And the thing with the planners is they're not only printed in the U S but they're printed in the U S and the cost to print them is almost the same as our price to sell them, yeah. which is why we can't mark them down. Yeah. And we, some, uh, sometimes we, it's possible to make books here and make a little bit more, uh, money on them like that, but it's getting a lot harder. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's why we have the digital uh, version for anybody internationally because we can't ship internationally anymore. And we have a lot of international people. Thank you guys for watching us, by the way. Um, but we have our products 50% off all of our digital. We have 54 ebooks. Well, no, I think it's more than that now. But anyway, we have over 50 ebooks for you guys um, also if you want. Um, all right, let's see. <laughs> Frosty Gal, hi, I decided to make your version of turkey. In fact, it's in the oven. Love your channel. You're going to love it. <coughs> it is delicious. <coughs> Kenneth says, none of your recipes go bad at my house. Thank you. <laughs> Man, are you single? We need to have a chat with mom. <laughs> Just kidding. She okay. would make recipes all day long. <laughs> no, she wouldn't. <laughs> no, she wouldn't. Okay. She might. Her um, is good. Catherine, <clears throat> when are you going to write a low sodium, no sodium cookbook? LOL. My budget took a hit due to sodium limitations, learning the ins and outs of sodium free baking leavenings. Well, that would just be like using more eggs, wouldn't it? And cream of tartar. I don't know. I don't know. I Yeah, that might be an interesting one. Although I won't do a low sodium one. I'm sorry. That's too. The problem, everybody keeps asking me to write cookbooks on all these specialty diets, guys. But the majority of them are so specialized that it's really not worth our time to do it. So sorry. Well, and if we make one that's one thing and one that's something else, we do a lot of work, but only a few people in that one area yeah. will buy it. Uh and Tar did the gluten-free because she has to eat gluten-free. Um, it is unfortunate about your sodium situation. Although Tara's doctor told her she wasn't eating enough sodium. Yeah. So, yeah. But 
most people worry about sodium and they don't need to, but I mean, it sounds like you do for, for something particular, but a lot of people, we won't mention any names who worry about their sodium when they just really don't need to be worrying about it. D, I ordered your cookbooks, volume one and volume two for my daughter's Christmas gift. I love mine. We made the laundry soap last week and I love it. Thank you. Rose, I'm making your, your meatloaf recipe and freezing meatballs. I have 10 pound roll of hamburger sitting in front of me. Then your live came on. You just keep rolling those meatballs. Actually, that's what I will do. The grandma's, the meatballs in Dining on Die Volume 1 are my grandma's recipes. And I'll take 10 pounds <clears throat> and I'll make Which grandma? meatballs and grandma Tatum. I'll make meatballs and meatloaf out of it. <clears throat> And then I'll freeze them. Thank you. Um, send me the next one. Uh, these Sue says these cookbooks would be great Christmas presents. <laughs> well, thank you guys for all these kudos. Are you just picking out all the good stuff? No, but I put oh. those in there to be encouraging. Well, thank you. you. Sue says these cookbooks would be great for Christmas presents. A lot of us who use to buy frozen dinners don't want to pay the high prices for no food. Yes, I know. That's exactly why we did it. Because you don't have to spend a lot of money on um, making food at home. I get the comment all the time. It's a lot cheaper to eat out than to buy the ingredients. No, it's not. That is a lie. Wait, we're, somebody, Straight from the pit of hell. Did they actually say that? No, I'm just saying. We get the comment all the time. Oh, oh. That people say it's cheaper to eat out. It isn't. Not even for one person. Not even close. Not, Not even, even close. And so you are right. You know what? It's so much easier if you just use the cookbook. Then you don't have to worry about the high prices of eating out. And man, even fast food, you pay like three or four times as much as it costs for you to have the, a similar meal that you make. Yep. If you buy, yep. buy it. And fast food isn't even that spectacular. <laughs> yep. Oh, I know. Hold the four winds says, that's a great idea to fix the trees indoors when you put them outside. Tether them tightly because my outdoor Christmas stuff's been flying all over the place. My poor candy canes and gnomes. Oh, my goodness. I got everything up last night and the wind kicked up. And we thought that my one gnome that I really love had committed suicide. Thankfully, we just found him buried in the snow. But we thought he jumped off the deck. We thought he had jumped off the deck. <laughs> we were going to have to have a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> um becky says last january about a half pre-cooked shank ham put in the freezer got on sale for 89 cents a pound think it's still okay oh yeah i would make our honey baked ham recipe volume one yep it's really yummy and shayla's ham and noodles is really good in there too that's my sister-in-law's ham and noodles um is the... Semper Fi, ooh, from the halls of Montezuma to the shores oh. of Tripoli. <laughs> My grandpa was a Marine. I have the Marine Corps him memorized. <laughs> or he, I used been make, his own. he used to line up the kids and have them all sing it every <laughs> <Yeah>. now and then. <laughs> <laughs> the other day, got 12 cans of green beans for 50 cents each and boneless chicken for $1.24. Told my mom I went. I want the book for Hanukkah slash Christmas. Yay. Thank you. And that is a great deal. Yeah. Boneless chicken for a dollar 24 pound. Wow. One of our viewers, she sent me a picture and I think it was, we're friends with them now, but let me look on my text here and see how much she said it was. Um, let's see just a second. Uh, hold on. Uh, oops. Where, oh, my phone's not loading out here. Shoot. I think it was 69 cents a pound that she, she found it for. Um, oh shoot. My phone's not loading now. Oh, 68 cents a pound. So yeah, she sent me a picture right there. Whoops. Look at that. And she said, I think that was in Arizona. 68 cents a pound. So you can find deals. Christina, making old-fashioned peanut butter cookies this weekend for the first time. Love you guys. Oh, thanks. Yes, we have that recipe, I think. Volume two, I can't remember for sure. Kathy says, y'all are so funny. Love your bantering humor. Do we banter? 
<laughs> we do. I thought it was arguing. Is it called bantering? Uh, tomato, tomato. <laughs> See why I need to go to the Caribbean and Mike's going to the Caribbean? Yep. <laughs> Kenneth says intervention, no, no, besides. <laughs> I know. I know. I can't handle any no besides. It was funny because Jack was counting his my gnomes to his friend that came over the other day. He's like, look at my mother. She's he said, Oh my goodness, I count 24 gnomes just right here on the porch. <laughs> I have a problem. Uh, Diana, do we mail to Canada? I'm sorry. We cannot do any more international shipping. It is due to the other country's laws. It has nothing to do with us. It is because of the other country's laws that we cannot ship to Canada, Australia, New Zealand, UK, EU. We can't do any of it anymore. So sorry about that. To try to comply with the tax laws we can't in those it. countries costs us a lot more than we make selling books there. Yeah. Marianne, I have your anniversary edition book. What is the difference between oh, are... that one and these two? Oh, I was going to say, but we do have ebook versions if you'd like yeah. to get one of those. We do. 50% off right now if you guys need them. I have the anniversary book. What is the difference between this one and the other two? So these are separate recipes. None of these recipes, well, there's variations of banana bread and muffins that I couldn't fit <clears> in volume one. Okay. So that's the only two recipes out of 800 recipes and tips that is the same sort of, but it's not really the same. Um, <clears throat> this has 40 new recipes from the anniversary edition. The anniversary edition is when we added those new recipes. Didn't we add them when we did this? We no. added more with this, didn't we? No, we added them when we did the anniversary edition. Okay, so volume one, volume two, they are, so I guess this one is the same. We added something to this. We added the pictures to this. No, we and added we something out, else. We took out the stories that were in the anniversary edition. But I'm pretty sure we added something else to this one. I don't know. I'll look it up and see. I'll co go compare them and see. If you own a pre twentieth um, uh, before the twentieth anniversary edition, okay, maybe it's the same. That maybe would have less recipes. Okay, but these are different recipes. So this is totally different recipes. So if you have that one. It's the same as this one, and this is totally different recipes. Since we've got these out, Charlotte was asking if the gluten-free book has a tortilla recipe. No, it does not. I could not find a good substitute for gluten-free tortillas oh, at the time when I wrote the book. Now I think I could probably do one, but at the time they didn't have... Um, I couldn't find one. There's probably one now, but I don't have one on that, I'm pretty sure. Well, I think so. Oh, good grief. Now you got me questioning it. The rice flour probably doesn't make things that bend uh, as well as that very easily. Well, actually, yeah, I don't. Um, I just use corn tortillas is what I do. Um, <clears throat> Wanda, I'm making your slow cook cranberry roast next week. My friend is picking my, my roast on her way to my house. Yeah. <laughs> Three ninety seven a pound. That's a good deal. You go, girl. I'm going to make up the baking mix. Sometimes I want to make up just a biscuit or two or four, but I don't want to dirty up utensils, etc. So by so by using the powdered milk, I'll just have to add water. Yes, happy days. You can do that. The baking mix is in volume one and on our website. Excuse me, livingonadime.com. <clears throat> Sorry. If you guys want to see what's in our Dining on a Dying Volume 1 cookbook, go get the ebook version. Type in, type in coupon code DINING1, D-I-N-I-N-G, and the number one, not O-N-E, the number one. Go clear to the end. Clear to the end of the checkout. Clear to the end of the checkout. The final page of the checkout. <laughs> and put the coupon code in there. It will say discount code. And you will get it for free if you want to see what's in Dining on a Dime Volume 1. And if you use the discount code and it asks you for a credit card, you did not get the discount code incorrectly. So don't put your credit card it in. It will say zero. For the free one. Yeah. It won't charge you. 
Wanda, is there a certain syrup to use for the recipes like the maple glazed chicken? No, you can use real maple syrup if you want, or you can use the fake stuff if you want. I personally use the fake stuff because I ain't going to pay $12 for a little bottle of syrup like that. And I hate maple syrup. Sorry. But <laughs> um, you can use any that you want. What's funny is I hate maple syrup, but I'll eat the maple glazed chicken. I like maple flavoring in things like maple, um, like maple bacon or uh, maple uh, flavored candies, like the maple nut things. I don't like maple syrup though, just by itself. I know it's weird, but it, when it's baked in something or if it's a candy or something like that, I like maple. I just don't like regular real maple syrup. Well, I mean, it's okay. It's kind of grown on me a little bit now that I'm getting old, but it, I, if I have a choice, I would get, oh, blueberry syrup. Oh, <laughs> that's what I would get is blueberry syrup. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to make a good grandma when I'm old because I'm one of those people that likes all the little jelly flavors and I like all the different beef jerkies and barbecue sauces. One of these days, I'm going to get 20 barbecue sauces and just do a taste test. <laughs> I love barbecue sauce. And I've always wanted to try like real Southern barbecue sauce or Texas barbecue sauce just to see because everybody says it's so good just to see if it's any different. But I like condiments, so I'm going to make a good grandma because then my kids and grandkids can just buy me gift baskets of all the jellies and all that kind of thing. And when you tell grandkids to get it together, they'll probably listen to you. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Valerie, there's very little difference between grass-fed and grain-fed, fed, um, but they do taste better. I don't think they taste better. I think they're hard and they're rubbery, and I don't like it. When we but, were in Ireland, everything was grass-fed. I didn't like it, it. Yeah, I didn't like the taste of it. It doesn't have enough fat. <clears throat> but I don't like it. Although, yeah. Yeah. Um... Let's see, Beth, I got a bag of chicken legs, 10 pounds for $4.50 yesterday. Good job cooking up 13 chicken legs for a few dinners right now. There you go. Yeah, and that's what I do. I'll cook up 10 pounds of chicken at once, and then it's all cooked up. And I don't have to cook for the rest of the week. And then I'll just freeze part of it in portion sizes and just use the rest for cooking. Susan says, sweetie, you and your mom have changed my life. I love your recipes. I'm now able to just shop sales because I've stocked my pantry and free freezer. Y'all rock. Yay. Yay. That is great. Cindy, I ordered dining on. Thank you. Cindy, I ordered dining on dine cookbook number one for my daughter for Christmas and gluten free for me for health issues. Thank you for such a great sale. You are welcome. Terry, I was given a big box of frozen diced kiwi. I didn't know you could freeze kiwi. That's a new one on me. Oh, it's, I didn't catch that it was diced. Any ideas on how to use or preserve it? I don't have a dehydrator. Don't want it to take up a ton of room in my freeze freezer. So you can dehydrate it in the oven at 170 degrees just overnight. Just put it on a cookie tray. We have how to dehydrate. Um, I think, yeah, how to dehydrate in Dining on a Dime Volume 1. It's the fruit leather, I think, is one of the dehydrating recipes. But you could make it into fruit leather using the recipe in volume one, livingonadime.com. The recipe's on there also. Um, you could make it into a sauce. If you like canning, you could probably make it into like a kiwi type sauce. But I would just dehydrate it in the oven on a sheet pan. And I'd probably put a parchment paper down or a sill pat down and do that. Sierra, yes, I have my coffee muck. I just forgot to fill it with water. <laughs> so I got to be getting all my Christmas mugs out. <clears throat> um, Kim, and by the way, for everyone wanting to know, this is water. This is Mike's favorite cup to drink out of. This is the only thing he's drank out of for the last 28 years. We use the same cups over and over again. And every now and then he goes and gets a soda like once a year. He'll get a soda. Usually then, we use Quick Trip, but this is another convenience store in our area. Yep. Actually, this is a convenience store out of the interstate where all the tourists go. So sometimes if if we're like out on a hike or something, the boys will want to get like an ice cream or something on the way back. Yeah. 
Although, given that we have a bunch of snow on the ground and it's 12 degrees outside, it's yeah. been a little while since then. Is food grade peroxide the same as 3%? I don't know, Kim. I don't know. You have to Google that one. She says she's tried looking. I don't know. Ooh. I, I go get the bottle of peroxide, but it's over at the house. So I can't, I can't just look at the bottle to see. Barbara Polly says kiwi jam. Yeah, that's that what I was be, thinking. A kiwi good. jam or a kiwi syrup would be good. You know. Ooh, Freedom for Us says smoothies. Yeah. I mean, I think that all those would be really good. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Well, here, Kim, let me just let me just text Dave real quick here. Dave, take a picture of the peroxide bottle for the nebulizer and tell me how much percent peroxide is in there, please. Send me the picture. Okay. Now mm -hmm. we'll see if Dave will send me a picture and, and we'll see. Curious what the bit is about food grade because I'm not sure what would make, I mean, peroxide, I mean, you don't want to have too high of a percentage. I would I guess, think peroxide would be peroxide. It is, except if you have a massive high percentage of peroxide, that wouldn't be good. But well, yeah, it's just more water added to it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Uh, Deanna, your family has such a positive impact on my life. Thank you. And my finances and my sense of self-sufficiency. I do appreciate you guys. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I am so glad. Samantha, how far past the Best Buy date are store-bought eggs? Now, is this not a typical teenager? He's only got six months. He's not going to be a teenager anymore. Why? <laughs> Because I'm your mother and I said so, exclamation point. <laughs> A viewer wants to know. <laughs> of course, it says if you want to know. It says if you want, if you were want uh. to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, a number of people saying some air fryers will also work as a dehydrator. Yeah, Tara mm -hmm. is actually ours for that yeah i just got a ninja one and it worked really good for that um yes three percent regular three percent oh it's three percent it's three percent and what does she want to know yeah uh, what's the difference between food grade and not i don't know where that was in here i can look it up on mine is food but gray peroxide the same as 3%? Well, this says 3%. So I guess so. Yeah, food grade is probably supposed to indicate that it's... Oops, can you even see that? It's it's probably supposed to oh. indicate that they're guaranteeing you that it's safe. But peroxide, if it's like 3% peroxide should be the same as any 3% peroxide because um, it's just... Hydrogen, it's hydrogen and oxygen yeah. together. Yeah. Samantha, how far past the Best Buy date are store-bought eggs okay? Oh, my goodness. I've eaten them two to three weeks. You'll smell them if they're bad. You'll smell them. I Actually, I've gone a month past the Best Buy date. And you'll smell them when, when they're not good anymore. Cynthia, does the gluten-free book have recipes other than bread? 40% off right now, guys. 48 hours left. For a Black Friday sale, yes, it does. It has all the meats, all the vegetables, all everything dairy-free. The ranch dressing for dairy-free is delicious. I'm sorry, I need to make some. Absolutely delicious. People just rave about our ranch dressing recipe. It's adapted from volume one, the red one. Um, can you show me the next batch? Um, yes. I have people that won't even buy store-bought ranch dressing anymore because they like it so much. Uh, um, sorry, I was placing one more question in there before I send it to you. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, wait. Oh, some of this I already sent you. Yeah. Where was the last one on, the, on your list? Oh, here it is, right here. This is it right here. Do you ever make your recipes in Frida ahead of time? Yes and no. So I don't sit and do and have a freezer batch baking day. Like some people who will remain nameless. Kimmy from She's in Her Apron. <laughs> you have to give Kimmy a hard time. Um, <clears throat> no. Because so like, you have to give her a hard time. 
because we love Kimmy. <laughs> yes, because we're I'm actually friends with Kimmy. I'm just harassing her for all of you who are gonna leave a message, uh, leave a comment. Um, so Kimmy will go in and she'll like make a whole bunch of freezer meals. I don't do it that way. What I do is I will make a meatloaf, and as I'm making tonight's meatloaf, I will use the entire five or ten pounds of hamburger that I have and make it into meatballs and several other meatloafs and then put it in the freezer. But I don't have a specific day where I go and make 30 freezer meals. I just do it as I'm going. Um, I, I um, will cook one roast. And then if I don't eat the whole roast, then I'll put it in little packets and freeze it for later. I'll cook the whole five pounds of ground beef put in little packets, put it in the freezer, but I don't have a freezer cooking date. I freeze ingredients for meals. I don't freeze entire meals. Um, okay, let's see. Next question. Patricia says, you once said there was a mistake on one of your recipes. Which one was it? Book one or two? Dining on a Dime, volume one. The index says the turkey, the slow roasted turkey recipe is on page 250. It is not, is it on page 240? You would still find it, and there's mm -hmm. nothing actually wrong with the recipe yeah. itself. It's just the index had the wrong page. Carol, I made your fajita seasonings a week ago and plan on never buying prepackaged stuff again. Yeah, guys, we have really good seasonings. I can't remember if fajitas is in volume one or volume two. I have never, ever, ever bought packets of seasonings, ever, ever. I would never do. I just make them homemade. Why? Because literally it's like five cents to make a big bottle versus a dollar for a little tiny bit at the store in the packets. Never bought gravy packets, never bought Italian seasoning packets, never bought any of those packets because I just make them using spices I already have on hand. Um, Heather, what is your thought on buying bulk meat from a farmer? It seems expensive to me, but many say it's cheaper in the long run. I have never found it to be cheaper, ever. I know people say that all the time, but if I can get it in the grocery store for $3 a pound or less, why would I buy 600 pounds of beef and have to store it and deal with it if it's more than $3 a pound? If you can get it for less, if you can get it for less than that, that's fine. And if you want to do it for convenience or whatever, you just like the meat better, that's fine. But as far as actually saving money, I have never found anyone when they actually calculate it out. They'll say it's $3 a pound, but that's $3 a pound before the processing fee. And then there's another $250, $300 bucks for processing it. So just because they give you one price, make sure that's the actual finished processed price of the meat. Yeah, a lot of those things, like we had family that was a farmer and they would just give it to us. And that was a good deal for us. But the thing is that, yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty price. And mm -hmm. even, well, yeah, I would say even another one. Well, yeah, <laughs> I was going to say something else, but it's just unnecessary. <laughs> OK, Um Devil Dog, I have two cases of Kirkland brand shakes. How long past the best buy dates are they drinkable? Is the camera moving or something? It's like, it keeps getting off. Camera follows beauty. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Devil Dog, I have two cases of Kirkland brand shakes. How long past the buy, best buy date are they drinkable? You mean they're milk-based? I would say probably a few months. Six months, probably. Cynthia, Tara, do you use chick, chick pea flour? No, not very often. I'll use it like chick pea flour pasta noodles sometimes, but I don't like the taste very well. Elaine, my husband is eating your maple glazed chicken from volume one now, and he loves it. Thank you. That is That and our honey glazed used to be 
and our Christmas candies, all three were going from the top of our posts on our website for years. Squeaky Me says, every time I go shopping, I hear you saying, how many hours would you have to work to buy this? And I wind up putting it back. Thank you for everything you have done to help everyone. That, I would say, is the number one tip to help you get your spending under control. Calculate how many hours you would have to work to do something. Most people don't realize that brand new car they bought because they have to have a car that they think isn't going to break down could take off one to two years worth of work. You just wouldn't have to work at all. You wouldn't have to work at all. <laughs> yeah, for the price that you have to pay for that. Is it really worth having $50 of pizza delivered if you have to work three to four hours to pay for that? And then you're too tired to cook? You're too tired because you're working to pay for stuff you don't need. Um... Susan, love the cookbook stuff normal people eat. Yes, our cookbooks are normal food. It's regular food for regular people. And you can eat better and spend less. Um, Bonita, there's an app called Flip that you can put in your local stores. Then you put in like hamburger and it'll tell you the price of hamburger in all your stores. I need to get that on my phone. That's, I keep hearing people absolutely love that. And I need to get that. And just for searching other stores in the rest of the country when people say they can't find it for whatever the reason is. I need to get that just so I can do that. We had an assistant who swore by that app and really liked mm -hmm. it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hold the four winds says Dollar Tree has so much gnome stuff right now. I know I'm having to control myself, but now we got two more trees to decorate. I may just have to go get me a couple of things. I don't know. We'll <laughs> see. Although I went to our Dollar Tree, first of all, they can't get enough people to work. So they've been closed for like six months and now they just opened again, but they're not getting stuff on the shelves very fast. But as soon as they get on the shelves, it's gone. I was going to do some Dollar Tree decorating products and I can't do them because they sold out. Um, Wasn't it the Dollar Tree here that <laughs> the person was returning the stuff instead of stocking the stuff? Yeah. Oh my goodness. <sighs> They, I'm like, <clears throat> our trees, our Dollar Tree has been closed for six months and they finally reopen and I go in there and they have like carts full of stuff to be put on the shelves with empty walls of stuff not put up. And this lady has one basket of maybe 40 or 50 little itty bitty items and they are having her put those restocks back on the shelf. I, we were there probably 45 minutes and she was spent that entire 45 minutes working on that one little basket instead of hauling booty <laughs> and getting all the Christmas stuff out. And then it was two days before Thanksgiving and they were putting out Thanksgiving stuff. I was like, are you kidding me people? <laughs> it's like they, they can't figure out priorities at our store. We just thought it, and it's not like this, the returns like, weren't refrigerated or anything like that. No, it was, it was just, just like little craft things and pens. And I was just like, oh my goodness, you would make so much more money if you would actually get the stuff that's in boxes on the wall. She probably could have got that entire car unloaded in a, in a hour. Uh, drives efficiency, inefficient things drive me nuts. Okay. The next list here, dear. Donna says, I cook bulk meats, freeze, and use in fruit future meal. That's pretty much what I do. I'll buy five pounds of hamburger and cook it for, you know, for the future. Ooh, Jane was asking, what did we have for supper yesterday? We had those. Uh, we had, we had potato flake chicken from volume two. We it had was delicious. The potato flake chicken tenders. And that's a gluten-free recipe right there. That's why I cook it a lot is... I got boneless, skinless chicken breasts for $1.97 this week. So you just dip it in the egg and then dip it in um, <clears throat> potato flakes seasoned with seasoned salt, potato flakes seasoned with seasoned salt, and then fried it up. And she made and that because we've been really busy this week and she was just trying to do something quick and easy. And, and 
the boys snarfed it all down and I had to have her make a little more. I had to make more after the show because the boys snarfed it all. Yep. <clears throat> Which is fine. But, um, okay, do I have any other questions? I have a few more here. Um, oh, a lot of people were talking about the egg test. I didn't know if you wanted to mention that, but uh, okay. here's... Do I cook the meatballs and the meatloaf before freezing? I do not. I un I cook it raw and then I cook it. Uh, what I do is I freeze it in bread pans for the meatloaf and then in foil. And I just lift the foil out and just stack it in foil packets. And the meatballs I freeze on a cookie sheet and then I just put them in a freezer bag. <clears throat> I sent it to you. If you didn't see it, I can show it to you. Here. Laura says, our chicken fajita recipe is to die for. She let it sit in the fridge overnight. It's her favorite. Yes, I haven't made that for a while. I should make those. Yeah. I haven't made fajitas. Well, that's because every date night we go and eat fajitas. So, yeah. I would still eat them. <clears throat> Jennifer <laughs> Jennifer says, put the eggs in water. If they lay flat, they're the freshest. Yes. If they tip, they're still good. And if they're floating, they're no good. So yes, Jennifer is right. Floating eggs are no good. Just put them in some water and float. Uh, Catherine says, that's what I asked for Christmas is different flavors of jams, jellies, and marmalades. Yes, I just love all the different, like, I've never had huckleberry jam. I think that would be good. I don't know. All the different flavors. I would love to try different marmalades. I don't know. I just like all those fun things. Um, <clears throat> last year, Ellie went to World Market and got me a couple of different ones, and those were really good. I can't remember what they were, but they were some really different ones, like... I don't know. Got me a lingonberry. That was really good. We were looking for that for Dave, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were some others too. I can't remember what. Yep. Denise, <clears throat> Mama Four. Tara, do you know how to make homemade versus Dawn power wash spray? I have a bottle, but I'm thinking of diluting with water and any combo. I do not, but I'm wondering if it actually, does it actually work better? Maybe that's a test that I need to do. I need to do that test to see if it actually works better. I don't know. What would I test it on? Because I don't really have a problem with my dishes being a problem. I don't know. I have to think on that one. Guys, tell me something I should test that on. Sincerely, Amber says, I took your advice on shopping after the holiday sales. Went to Michael's today and bought Thanksgiving themed baking and crafting ideas for 70% off. Woohoo. High five. We didn't high five, but you know what I mean. You go, girl. Wait, Barbara says huckleberry preserves are delicious. Yep. Was it, what was the one that we got in the UK that? Uh, we, black currant. Oh, red currant. Oh, that was so good. We brought back way more of them than we probably should have. I didn't know currant jelly was like illegal in the United States for a really <laughs> long time. It's legal now again, I guess, but you couldn't grow black currants because it had some disease that caused some other tree to die or something. And so it was illegal for a long time. So you couldn't get it here. So when we went to Europe, I got like six jars of black currant jelly because it was so good. And now I can't find it anywhere here. But oh man, that stuff was, I love that stuff. <coughs> Yay, Jill ordered both of our books, all of our books for her daughters and volume one for her. Thank you. 40% off guys right now. Our Christmas sale is almost over. Only 48 hours left, but 40% off the print books. 50% off the ebooks and our planners aren't on sale, but they are at the printer getting ready to be done. Hopefully next, um, <clears throat> hopefully next week, mom and I are going to go down and get them. I hope we will see. Sorry about that. Jack's got a thing going on. I had to watch for it. Um, Ooh, small, Valerie. Small World Adventure says, making your meatloaf recipe tonight for the first time and excited. Yay. I think you'll love it. I think you'll love it. I don't like meatloaf. And I made this meatloaf and I love it. I love meatloaf. Val oh, I should make that with some of the hamburger we got on sale this week. Yeah. Valerie, I make a double batch of chili lasagna or any other casserole and freeze one. That's what I do. Yep. That's what I do. Uh, Patricia, you both have such pretty complexions for mom. Oh, you have a pretty complexion. Too. <laughs> what is your secret? Son. Good. <laughs> good genetics. I don't drink. I don't smoke. And I'm doing a makeup video coming up pretty soon. And I will sh tell you what I use for my makeup that's coming up. We do have an old version 
And I've changed a little bit, but not a lot from that one. So you can look that up too. Have you ever used coconut oil and does it give the taste of coconut? Yes, it does faintly, Karen, give the taste of coconut. So it kind of depends on what you're using in it, using it for, but really not that much. So it just kind of depends on what you're using it in. Uh, Beth. La Moderna Vermicelli is around 48 cents for a seven, eight, seven ounce bag at Walmart. Put a quarter cup in with some rice, brown in butter, add some water. Bullion season, you just made your own rice aroni. Well, there you go. We do have a rice aroni recipe copycat in volume one right here. Also, all right, any other questions? Um, well, there's just a few little comments. You can read them offline if you want. <clears throat> well, yeah. Missy's is a question. <laughs> uh, what packaging do you use to freeze your cooked hamburger? I use the cheap fold top sandwich bags. Um, I don't even use the zip top. And then I put all of those little packets in a freezer bag. Uh, so one big zip top bag yeah. with the little ones that are not zip top bags. Yes. Kenneth says, honey glazed, yum a doodle doo. It is delicious, isn't it? So yes. It's one of the viewer's favorite recipes. Yeah. Yep. Susan, after making several recipes and Thanksgiving turkey, I will follow your advice to the ends of the earth perfection. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Guys, our recipes are tested over 70 years old. These are my mom, me. My mom, about half of the recipes are mine, and then the rest are divided up between mom and grandma and great grandma's recipes. Um, Laura says she's so grateful for the undated planner. Thank you so much. Yes. Yay. This is a combination between mom's planner that she used from the 70s and me with my ADD tendencies to help me keep my house clean. It's a fusion planner. It's a fusion. <laughs> Well, there you go. Yeah, I had a choice. This, when your parents warn you about marrying someone, listen. You could have done a lot worse, woman. I could have. This is true. Um, and the last is looking forward to makeup video. Thank you, Nancy. Or do we have anything else that we needed? Or is that it? Uh, no. Oh, how's grandma doing? Grandma is doing really good. And mom is feeling much better. So... Yes, we had grandma at death's door one minute and six hours later, she was revived. So looking forward to seeing her sometime so, um, before too long, hopefully. Mom and I are going down to see <clears throat> her when we pick up the rest of the planners at the printers. If if you've received a notice that your planner has, has shipped, that is... Um, all the planners that we have shipped, we are shipping the rest as soon as we get them, hopefully next week or the week after, but we're hoping it's next week. I hope they were having an issue getting the uh, wire for them. We have sold half of the printers that we already, uh, half of the planners that we already have at uh, the printers. That we've already commissioned? Yeah, we have sold half of them already. And the ones that Ellie brought up, who was sitting in the snow on the side of the road in the rest area. Half of those are, um, that was part of, that was, we got that first third when she came up for Thanksgiving. And so, you know, the rest the, of them. The planners didn't actually get snowed <laughs> No, the planners didn't get snowed on, thankfully. It was just flurries, but it was just hilarious that she was sitting on the side of the road waiting for Mike to come get her. Well, but anyway. Diane, uh, sorry, a couple more. Diana asked, is... One seventy nine a good price per pound for ham with a shank bone. Uh, not really. Usually a dollar a pound, less than a dollar a pound is a good price. But nowadays with meat, anything under two dollars a pound isn't horrible. But since they were putting meat, since they were putting ham for ninety seven cents a pound for that same one at Thanksgiving, they will probably do it again at Christmas. But I wouldn't wait into the new year to get it. So, and then uh, Pam asked, what do you store your pastas in? Cat litter buckets. You leave them in the package and then just put them in the cat litter buckets. Yeah. Yep, I don't do anything special. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I don't do anything special. Wanda says I have three daughters since hubby died. The youngest one comes every evening. I cook, take, I cook take out for her and her daughter. The other two, we text photos of what we cooked for the day to give each other ideas. That's a great idea. Nice. Yeah. 
That's a really, really good idea. Um, <clears throat> all, right, all right. Jenny says, you look like Ed Wine. Wynn? Wynn. Who think, is Ed Wynn? I don't know. I'll have to check who and see. Who is Ed Wynn? Let's see who Ed Wynn is. And then we'll Ed Wynn. What does Ed Wynn look like? Whoa! <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> he looks like Google. I just had Where'd to pretend. Go? Dun, dun, dun. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you look like, oh, yeah, I guess I could see here, the resemblance. Here, I'll do the face. Oh, of course, nobody else can see the picture. Here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I would say you look like Edwin. Like that. <laughs> All right. Oh, my goodness. Now everybody's going to have to go Google it. Cheryl says, love your show, admire your fortitude, and how you stand up on the Word of God. Well, thank you. We are having <clears throat> Wednesday's show be is Christmas a pagan holiday, so that's going to be a fun one. Why? Because people keep telling you, why are you doing celebrating Christmas? Yep. Yep. And everyone <laughs> wants to know, have I ever used diatomaceous earth internally? Yes, I have. Yep, I have. So... Um, <clears throat> Yeah. It has instructions on I mean, the package yeah. for doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. All right. Visit us at livingonadime.com, guys. Mike will put the videos, or I mean, put the links for the cookbooks in there. Also, if you need a free Bible, you can go to livingonadime.com, click on the store, click on free Bible. You can get it there. Only 48 hours left until our Black Friday slash Christmas sale on all of our print books, 40% off, and all of our ebooks, 50% off. Christmas sale is almost over, guys. 48 hours, 48 hours. And um, <clears throat> this is our help us pay our house off sale. <laughs> I thought this was the Black Friday slash Christmas sale. The Black Friday slash Christmas sale, it is. But it's also our help us pay our house off sale. I see. <laughs> well, that's a good goal. Gracie <laughs> says, what is your process for letting your gray hair grow out? I'm actually doing a video on that. So be watching for that in probably a couple of weeks. Um, Barbara just want to know when you're going to do the thousand dollar grocery shopping thing you said yesterday. I'll probably try to go to the grocery store next week and it'll probably be out in mid December, probably by the time my editors get done editing it. So, bye everyone. Have a good night. Livingonadine.com. Thank you for joining us.